Hey guys, it's Mike Mangelardi from Coding Artist here, and I wanted to do a quick video tutorial explaining how Z index works with CSS. And we're going to explain this by going over a pure CSS image of a pizza. Now, before we get to that, I'm going to go over how layers work in a vector graphic tool, such as a fading designer in front of me. And we're going to get a really clear visualization of how layers work. So let's look at this image. So we have our koala image, which is a bunch of different shapes and each shape makes its own layer, which we have named here on the right. So for instance, we have our nose, our hair right, our hair left, our pupil right and our pupil left and so forth. Now let's take a look at our nose. Our nose is the highest on this list of different layers. Therefore, it's going to be on top of everything else. So if I take this nose, and I start to drag it around. We see that's not going to be behind anything because it's always going to be on top because it's at the top of our layer list. Now let me move it down two notches. So now the nose layer is going to be behind the hair left and hair right. So let's click this nose again and we drag it around and we see it's still on top of everything else. However, if we go to our hair, it's going behind it and that's because our nose is on top of everything else but below our hair left and our hair right. So it's going behind these layers, hair left and hair right. So for instance, if I send this all the way to the back, then now I can't see it at all because we have this blue background that's going to be covering it. And so our nose is at the bottom of this list and it's the very bottom layer. So with Z index, the lower the number, the lower to the bottom of the layer list that CSS shape will be. However, if we bring it all the way to the top and we have a Z index of the highest number, that means it's going to be on top of everything else. So that's the visualization. Now let's look at this with an actual pure CSS image of a pizza. So right now we have a box that's going to be the container for our pizza. And then we have our pizza, which is just going to be some crust. Now let's say we want to add some sauce on top of our pizza. So now we have a sauce that we've already predefined in our CSS that is being applied on top of our pizza. So let's go ahead and add some cheese as well. So I added a cheese and now we get this white mozzarella circle that's on the very top. So in here we haven't specified any Z index values. So by default it's going to be first come first serve as far as layering. So first we have our pizza, which is going to be the very bottom layer. And then we have sauce and cheese one that are nested on top of our pizza. So because sauce comes first, that means it's going to be the layer right above our pizza crust. And then we have cheese one coming after sauce. So that means our cheese one is going to be the layer right above our sauce. Now, because we haven't manually specified the layers using Z index, if I change this to cheese one and change this to sauce, now cheese one is coming first. So it's going to be the first layer above the pizza crust. Then sauce is going to be the next class. So sauce is going to be above both the pizza and the cheese one. And because the way our cheese one is positioned, now our sauce is completely covering our cheese. So let's go ahead and change this back. And I'm going to go ahead and specify specific Z index values. So our pizza is going to be the very bottom. So we give it the lowest number. So Z index of one. Then we go over to our sauce and we want our sauce just above our pizza. So we're going to specify Z index of two. Now we want our cheese above everything else, so we're going to specify Z index 3. So now we have the correct layering that we want, but the order isn't going to matter because we gave specific Z index values. So now if I change this back to cheese 1, and I change back this to sauce, so as we can see, cheese 1 is coming first, so if we didn't have a Z index specified, it would be behind our sauce. However, we gave our cheese one a Z index of three and we gave our sauce a Z index of two. So now that's going to specify the layers and it isn't going back to default, which is going to be dependent upon the order. 
Now let's say we have a cheese one, which has a Z index of two, and our sauce is a Z index of two, then that means that they're going to be at the same layer level. Now it's going to be dependent upon what comes first. However, we want to be very careful to be manually specifying what our Z index layers are, and that's the advantage of using Z index, is that you have complete precision over your layers, just as you would if we had a vector graphic tool where we can manually change where the layer is going to be in our image, we can do the same thing with our pure CSS image by specifying a Z index. All right, so this looks good. This is how we'd want a normal pizza. We'd want the crust first, then we'd want our sauce, and then we want some cheese on top. But let's change this up just for the sake of testing. And I'm going to make pizza be our layer number two. And now I'm going to make our cheese one our bottom layer. So now, as you can see, if I get rid of my sauce, that our cheese is still being on top of our pizza, even though it has a lower Z index than our pizza. Now the reason this is, is because cheese is nested underneath pizza. So because our cheese is nested like this, it's always going to have to be on top of our pizza. It can never be behind it. So what if we were in the situation where we really wanted to have our cheese behind our pizza crust? Now I know this isn't a real life example, but let's do it for the sake of explanation. So we have pizza, which is the parent div of our cheese one. So it's always going to be below our cheese one. So how we get around this is we can make a copy of our pizza, which we'll call pizza copy. Now I'm just going to go and copy this pizza class. And because it's positioned underneath pizza, it is going to be positioned by percentages related to our pizza. And it's going to be sized according to our pizza. So if we want exact copy, we just want our height and width to be 100%. And we could just make the top and left zero. So now we have exact replica of our pizza crust. However, it's nested underneath pizza. So now let's give our cheese one a different left value so we can see this more clearly. So now we can see because our cheese one index is lower than our pizza copy index, it's coming behind it. Now the pizza copy allows this to work because pizza copy is at the same level as cheese one. In other words, they're both nested underneath pizza. So this is an example that might come across in a lot of cases when you're working with pure CSS images where you'll need to make a copy in order to control the layering. So let's go back and add sauce and let's just double check we have all of our Z index like we normally want it. So we give our pizza of a Z index of one and we want our pizza copy to also have a Z index of one because we want both of these to be at the bottom layer and they're the same thing. Now we want our sauce to be just on top so we give it a higher number of Z index two. Lastly, we're going to want our cheese on the very top so we give it a Z index of three. And now if I adjust the left value again, we see that it is on top of everything else like we originally had it. So guys, that is how you work with Z index values. Again, all it's doing is giving you precise control over the depth of the layer that current class has. And when you're working with pure CSS images, this is going to be important as you're going to have a lot of different shapes overlapping each other and you're going to have to specify the layer that you want it at. So guys, that's all I wanted to cover. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out the daily CSS images challenge and you can get the link for that in the description. 
How that works is that for each day over 50 days, you're going to get a drawing prompt to make a pure CSS image. And it's a great way to practice. And if you're not familiar with pure CSS images yet, don't worry, we'll send you some links so you can get started. So that's all I wanted to cover. Thank you so much for checking out this video and we'll see you next time. Thank you.